Hi there, we're here today at the Dirty Apron Cooking School with the lovely chef David Robertson. Now David's well known for his culinary skills, but ta-da! Yeah. Look at that, a new cookbook. That's there what we're it is. here to talk about. Actually, we're more we're here to teach me something in the kitchen, which is a wide open field, let me yeah. tell you. <laughs> We'll get you there. You so mean that supportively. What are we going to make today? Okay, so this is we're still in halibut season. So yes. we're going to do a beautiful pan seared halibut. Right. Okay, we're going to serve that up with some uh, charred tomato coulis, a little bit of fingerling potatoes, crushed in olive oil. But one of the things with halibut is the key is. Okay, I'm paying attention. This is where most people make the mistake is they have a pan and the pan's not really hot enough. Right. So what happens is it starts to stick. So when we want to go high heat, we're going to go with some grapeseed oil. Mm -hmm. It's going to add. A higher smoking point to what we need. And it's good for you, grapeseed oil. It's good for you, and it's actually odorless. So when you cook with that, oh, there's no smell. It's a win. Uh, one of the things we want to do with the halibut is we're going to get a nice pan sear on there. Okay. How do we know it's hot enough then? If it's uh, um, there's nothing wrong with waiting for a little smoke to come off it, okay. but also the oil will start to appear to look like water rolling back very, very okay. easily. When we put the halibut in, don't do what some people do and they drop it from a foot above. So you want to make sure, and you can always do the test. Ah, right? You hear that that's right a away. Good trick. There you go. Hey. And then don't be afraid of that smoke. And I'm going to say this I'm going to be bold enough to say this it's okay. impossible to burn that halibut. Come on. It's impossible to burn it. not in my kitchen, my friend. Okay, so look at that. You're thinking right now at home, oh my goodness, is that going to burn? No, it's not. So basically what's happening is the milk solids now are caramelizing right. as it hits the oil and it's going to create this beautiful brown golden crust. So I usually leave it here for about 30 to seconds and then we take the pan right. and we're going to transfer that into our oven. So we put it in the oven so we get more of a round heat so we're not just cooking it from the bottom up now. And I find a good temperature is 400 degrees Fahrenheit and I usually like to cook a minute per ounce. Okay. So we have a nice five ounce piece here so we're going to go five minutes on there and that will work quite well for us. All right. Yeah. Okay. And this is the stuff that's going to go with it. Yeah. So what we did here earlier is we cooked off some potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, we actually peeled the potatoes after also. And uh, we, this is, we can serve this room temperature warm. We've put a little bit of lemon in here, some olive oil, some Italian leaf parsley, some chives. Um, has a nice taste, a little salt and pepper. So that will go very nice with the halibut. Wait a minute, you peeled them after you cooked them? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this right. is one thing. Another trick, right? now why is that? Um, so the potatoes get, don't get waterlogged, okay? Uh, it's It might be something you find more professional kitchens are doing. Yeah. People are at home, I don't want to peel my potatoes. Don't have to, but Keep in mind, if you peel them after, you retain more of the flavor of the potato. I'm going to do that now because I'm often waterlogging potatoes and I'm like, oh, cook <laughs> that's, too long. That's the trick. Okay. Um, we had, what we did here is we actually grilled some tomatoes. We pureed it up with right. a little sherry vinegar, some olive oil, some fresh cumin seed, and that's going to give it a really kind of nice kick with the halibut. Okay, we're going to just saute a little spinach while that's in the oven. So what we're going to do is uh, we don't need a lot of heat happening on this one. So actually, with this one, I put a little cube of the butter in. When I start cooking with butter, I don't allow the pan to heat up for a long period of time. I put it in right away. We're gonna take a little bit of our garlic here. And Why I also- that? that doesn't burn? Yeah, it doesn't burn. Garlic doesn't have a high, high heat point. So what mm -hmm. happens is it'll start burning quite easily. So will the butter. So I allow them both to warm up in the pan together. If you heat the pan up, like we did with the right. halibut, and you try to throw that butter or garlic okay. in, you, it's a disaster. It's a disaster and you're just going to want to... I'm excited about the spinach because I have another question, but how do you keep spinach from just being watery? Or... Yeah, so one of the things is, is you got to wash it. Wash your spinach good. Yeah. You got to dry it out. So if you have a spa salad spinner, that can work well. Okay. And um, I like baby spinach opposed to full grown spinach. It has more of a subtle flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually uh, full grown spinach can be quite strong and bitter in flavor. So now that we've just kind of cook that garlic a little bit mm -hmm. and then I usually wait till I see one or two of the little bits of garlic going brown on me and that's when I hit the pan with the spinach and I actually just turn the pan off after. Oh, okay. okay. And you can smell that now, yeah, right? Yeah, it smells okay. great. So there we go. In goes the spinach and then what we do is we turn the pan right off, come in with a little bit of pepper here, a little bit of salt at this point, okay, and then basically allow the heat of the pan just to pull the spinach mm -hmm. down at this point, okay? 
There yeah, because that's the one that you can really overcook quite easily, right? Yeah, the most places do. Yeah. And if it's yeah. overcooked, you get that mushy, yeah, a mound of, of a mound of something green. Yes. Okay. So pulling out the fish, basically you get that nice smoke. We got a nice caramelization happening here. Okay. And oh, we take that. that out. And so what I what I like to do is as that's caramelizing, is we're going to carefully flip that over. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as we do that, look at that beautiful crust that we get. You didn't burn it. I did burn it, I promise. I said it's impossible to burn. Now I finish it with a little bit of butter. Oh, Remember yeah. in cooking, butter. butter makes everything better. Absolutely. There we go, a little lemon. And this is just helping caramelize as we have that in the pan. And then basically what I like to do is just kind of swirl that all around, mm -hmm. okay? And so now, I let that sit. It's okay to allow it to sit, get a little bit of heat mm -hmm. from the bottom up. Looking at the halibut, it's opaque all around. Right. Like that's, we actually, it's crispy. It's actually So beautiful. we started, we pan fried the bottom yeah. for a couple of seconds, 30 seconds you said, put it in an oven at 400 degrees, mm -hmm. a minute per ounce, yeah. flipped it over out here, some lemon, some salt and pepper, and yeah, a little bit of butter. And, and, oh, and the butter. butter. Don't forget Don't the butter. Forget Don't the forget butter. the butter. And so now we have a beautiful fish. Um, oh that, that we have ready to go. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start plating this lovely dish now. Yeah, so be thoughtful. Like think about like your elements of what you have, how you wanna showcase it. You know, you don't have to spend an hour trying to figure out right. how to plate, but just, you know, if you've got some color, you wanna highlight that, we can go for it. Um, sometimes even like a little cookie cutter mm -hmm. to keep everything in place. Right? Just make sure you remove it after. <laughs> get, can help also. That would be shocking when someone comes into that. <laughs> so, so what's this? This is the charred tomato coolie sauce that we've done mm. with the uh, flavors of the lemon, the olive oil, a little bit of the cumin seed. And so I put that in there and then I'm going to come along and put a little bit of those potatoes that we have also. And so as I'm putting this in here, it really helps. And chefs like doing this in the restaurant because it keeps everything nice and clean together. And we'll put a little bit of the potato in there as well. And then of course we have our spinach, which we want to put in there. And, and so it's just right, it's just done. You know, barely. yeah, it's just, there's still a little bit of life to it. It's not mm -hmm. like wilting and falling apart on us. We can put a little bit in the middle there. And then of course the, the Sort of the main event here is our beautiful halibut, which has come in, and I like to flip that over once, twice, get a nice sheen on that, and then of course that sits beautifully on the top, and then you can re remove oh, your little that trick. ring. Yeah, make sure you remove the ring. All right? Yeah, I know, but that's and that's a beautiful pan-seared crispy halibut. We got the potatoes, the tomatoes, and all the flavors will marry well.